Ladies and gentlemen, I know what you're thinking by the title. Oh my God, how is he bearish? The market's so good. I'm not bearish. The market looks excellent. The market looks great from a macro perspective. I do think we'll see a short-term pullback. Uh, I'll discuss that in this video, but this market looks great. Okay, Bitcoin's got all-time highs. Ethereum and Total 3 are on the verge of following its lead. I can sit here and I can give you bullish you know, content all day and I can feed your ego and I can reinforce your bias or... I can tell you the threats, okay? What's more useful? Me sitting here and telling you what you already know, the market's bullish, right? You can see the market's bullish. The chart's going up, the charts are green. Or I can show you what you potentially need to watch out for, okay? Not because they're going to happen, not because the threats are so serious and they're definitely gonna send the market downwards, not because I'm bearish, I'm not, I'm bullish, but I can show you these threats so you know what to look out for in case they play out and you do not get caught off guard, okay? You have to to keep the threats in the front of your mind. That's how you react to the market environment if it changes. That's how you avoid getting destroyed in your positions. So I will go over the macro bullishness because there is macro bullishness here. I will also discuss the short-term bearishness, but more importantly in this video, I will be giving you three of the major concerns we have with the Bitcoin charts right now. I'm not bearish, I'm bullish, I have assets, I'm holding assets, okay? But these concerns matter and you need to see them regardless of if you're bullish or bearish because if you're bullish and you're holding bags, you need to have points in which you accept, okay, I'm taking a step back, I don't like this market environment right now. And the only way you'll be able to do that is if you're aware of the threat. So let's get very familiar with the threats for the sake of our own bullish clarity. Guys, before we get into it, go drop a comment down there. It takes 15 seconds. Just drop an emoji, say hello, say thanks for the content, say whatever you want. Just helps out the algorithm a lot. I really appreciate that. Blowfin and Bitunix are the two exchanges I advertise on this YouTube channel. Just before we get into it, go ahead and sign up to those if you're interested. My links are down below. They're global non-KYC. There's a 15% trading fee discount that will be attached to your account for life on every single buy and sell if you sign up with my Bitunix referral link. Blowfin's an alternative option. You can't go wrong. Never been hacked before. Either of these exchanges very safe, historically speaking. My links are down below. Check them out. Let's get into the content. So blah, 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 blah. Everyone knows Bitcoin's in a good position. It's broke all-time highs. That's all good. Uh, if you want absolute full confirmation that this breakout is absolutely real, uh, you're going to need to be waiting for that weekly candle close above 69,000. I'm not saying you need to do that. I'm personally not doing that. I am actually very confident that this breakout is real, but that is the objective truth. 69,000 is the 2021 all-time high. It is the important weekly chart level. It's a level that's acted as weekly chart resistance in March and back here just two weeks ago on two consecutive weekly candles. That is the critical macro breakout point until there is a week we close above 69k this move is technically an unconfirmed move that's just the simple truth uh now again i'm not saying you need to sit here waiting for that i'm just saying that if we don't get that if we do end up coming down and closing below it that is a very very big red flag and that's a sign to run for the hills immediately so fingers crossed that does not happen Regardless of that, uh, as for our macro breakdown confirmations, again, 69K weekly close below that level would be very bad, but other things would be uh, the yellow lines on the screen right here, specifically this yellow line back from 2018, acting as very important resistance and support over the years. I'm circling multiple occasions where that was the case. Uh, if that level is broken, that would be a sign for me to run for the hills until that occurs. I'm actually not you know, bearish at all in these markets. I think we're in a very good position, very good macro position. Now that we've got the Bitcoin long-term out of the way, we'll revisit it in a second here. We'll get into the short-term. Uh, although Bitcoin looks great on the short-term, on the long-term, sorry, there is some short-term concerns. Uh, if we look at the, you know, for example, the hourly chart, we could do the same thing with the four hourly, same thing with the 15 minute. All these short-term charts are showing the same thing. Clear bearish divergence, okay? There it is with higher highs in the price chart, lower highs on the RSI. Clear descending volume in the upwards trend. Look at that volume indicator right there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, as the price grinds upwards, the volume grinds downwards. This is again a pattern of exhaustion and either a ascending channel formation or an ascending wedge formation. It's unconfirmed, but there is an ascending structure of some sort, with, which is a, a pattern of exhaustion. Okay, so there is exhaustion going on in short term. It really would not surprise me in the slightest if we see a short term pullback here. So perhaps if you are right now currently waiting for entry, you, you might be served by actually waiting for that pullback and entry on support. Uh, that could be something you'd be you'd be looking to do. I would estimate probably a 75% chance of a further pullback here on Bitcoin down to something at least like 73,000, probably at the minimum, right? That mid to upper 73K range could go as low as 69K and there wouldn't be any problem with going as low as 69K. That would still constitute a higher high in this upwards trend. So 69K would even be a healthy pullback level. level uh, but we certainly don't need to go that low. 
So that's the Bitcoin short term. As for the rest of the charts here, the total three and Ethereum following Bitcoin's lead, great to see on the total three, breaking its very strong yellow resistance level, okay? Breaking that to the upside, also breaking very major horizontal resistance right there, that red rectangle. Also on top of that, breaking a critical crevice in the volume profile and trying our best to get above 3,000. Until Ethereum gets above 3,000, I wouldn't consider this breakout fully confirmed in the same way I'm talking about Bitcoin. Although just like Bitcoin as well, I do think it's highly likely uh, that we are in a breakout here. Again, it's just not fully confirmed in my view until we get above 3,000, but these charts are looking excellent and altcoins are starting to look good in general. Uh, total three shows the same thing. You know, bouncing from a very critical, and this is a macro bounce right here, weekly chart RSI support level on the total three, which is the altcoin market cap chart. And if we zoom into the short term, we can see for the first time really starting to put pressure First time since July, I should say, really started to put pressure on the horizontal resistance level on the screen there. Again, just like Ethereum, just like Bitcoin, looking very good. The breakout will likely work, but until it actually does fully, until it actually properly flips that level, that full confirmation is simply not there. So these charts are really starting to look good. They're really starting to take steps in the right direction, just probably not completely over the line yet. Um, you know, and this short-term correction could lead to some turbulence around these major resistance levels on Ethereum and Total 3. Uh, so perhaps if you're looking to get into alt to altcoins, you might want to be waiting a little bit more just to see what happens in regards to these resistance levels. Uh, but overall, the macro is very much good here. We know for a fact, by the way, that when Bitcoin breaks its all-time high, in this case, when Bitcoin broke 69,000, okay, uh, which was the cyclical all-time high, ignore what happened in March. There's good reason to ignore what happened in March. Uh, when Bitcoin breaks its all-time high, that's exactly pretty much when altcoin season starts. Um, and so pretty much, if we're talking on a cyclical macro scale, this is around when altcoin season should begin. So it's not surprising to see Ethereum start to move up here. It's not surprising to see the total three do the same thing. Uh, these moves aren't fully confirmed yet, but they're very much taking steps towards uh, a parabolic bull market with an altcoin season. Uh, and it's really not going to take much more to fully confirm that. Literally another 5%, we're good to go. Now, you know, I could sit here all day and, and this is what I said in the introduction. You know, I, I really could have made this video super, super bullish leading. I could have put green in the thumbnail, green in the title, everything, parabolic, breakout, all this. It's not helpful. It's really not helpful. Everyone's doing that right now. I really want to show you the things uh, you know, it's bullish, right? If you want my conclusion on the charts, they're bullish. Awesome, cool. Does that help you? No, it doesn't. It doesn't show you anything. It just, it's just uh, reinforcing your bias, okay? What you need to look at is the actual threats here, okay? I'm not saying they're likely to play out. I'm not bearish at all. I'm bullish in this market. But I'm saying you need to watch these threats because they are threats. And if they do play out and you're not watching them, you'll get wrecked, right? One of them is the DXY, right? DXY is very, very important. It's reverse correlated to Bitcoin, okay? When this chart is in a bull market, Bitcoin is in a bear market. When this chart is in a bear market, Bitcoin is in a bull market. You look at, uh, for example, 2017, that was a Bitcoin bull market. Look what the DXY did. Okay, 2020, that was a Bitcoin bull market. Look what the DXY did. Re the reverse is also true. This was a Bitcoin bear market. This was a Bitcoin bear market. Okay? DXY skyrockets in Bitcoin bear markets. Uh, this chart going up drags Bitcoin down. All right. And right now, this chart is pretty much on the edge of a critical breakout point. Now, it very well should, I hope it does, and it probably should from a cyclical level reject here. But if it does break out, if it does break that yellow line, if it does break the yellow line in the weekly chart RSI, especially considering it recently bounced off a support zone from 2015, this could get very ugly very quickly for Bitcoin and this move could roll over. The exact same is true about the USDT.D chart, the USDT dominance chart, okay? Obviously, it's measuring the percentage of the money in the cryptocurrency market that is in USDT, the stablecoin. Hence, when this chart goes down, that represents people deploying their USDT into assets, okay? So this chart going down is good for the market. This chart going up is bad for the market. Now, this chart right now is in a free fall, and that's why the market's going upwards, or that's, uh, I guess, synonymous with the market going upwards. But what you need to understand is that it is approaching a major support zone that stems backwards from 2019. If that major support zone does not break down, we will see the market roll over. This support zone has to be lost. So here we go. DXY has to reject and go down. The USDT.D chart uh, has to reject and go down as well, okay? They are both at pretty major levels. USDT is approaching major support. It's not there yet. There is some more room for crypto to move before that critical point comes. Uh, and the, the DXY is pretty much at major resistance. So, you know, pretty important things to watch. We'll keep you updated on this YouTube channel, especially as USDT 
literally gets to that price level, I expect Bitcoin to be at strong resistance when that occurs. Uh, and we need to see a breakdown there for this macro bull market to continue. One more thing I will mention is the threat of the 5.3 theory playing out. What is the 5.3 theory? The 5.3 theory is uh, established by many, many people, namely one of them being Crypto Crew University. Basically, if you take the returns from the bottom, let's just say from, let's just start over here in 2012. If you take the returns from the bottom of the 2012 bear market to the top of the 2013 bull market, you will get a percentage return of around 60,000. If you divide that number, 60,000%, by 5.3, okay, you will get the exact return that took place from the bottom to the top of the following cycle. If you divide that number by 5.3, okay, around 12,000, you will get the exact return that took place from 2019 bear market to the top of the following cycle. Now you've got 2,100 there, around 2,000 if we were precise. If you divide that number by 5.3, what do you get? All right, let's go ahead and do it. 2,100, I don't know the exact number, we're just being vague here. Divided by 5.3, we get 396. If we go ahead and measure 396% from the bear market bottom and extrapolate this trend forward, that brings Bitcoin, okay, to around, okay, I, I measured it slightly wrong because I wasn't precise, but if I did it correctly, it takes Bitcoin to exactly 79,000 USD, okay? Meaning the 5.3 trend, the trend that has pretty much predicted every top on Bitcoin so far, uh, extrapolated from the very first cycle, predicts a Bitcoin top at 79,000. Now, I disagree with this, okay? I don't think this target is real. I don't think it takes four-year cycle into account. I think it's an unsustainable trend because if you extrapolate the trend past this cycle, you will see that Bitcoin never reaches an all-time high again, okay? So it's an unsustainable trend. It doesn't take four-year cycle into account. And four-year cycle is very important considering we've just seen seven and a half months of consolidation specifically to get back on track to where we need to be with the four-year cycle. But regardless of my subjective opinion about it, regardless of whether I think it's going to hold or break, I think it won't last. I think we will go higher on Bitcoin. I think the bull market will go for longer. But regardless of my opinion, the fact of the matter is there is a case to be made that 79K is the major topping level for Bitcoin. Therefore, regardless of the validity of that case, the fact of the matter is we need to watch 79K very closely. If we start to see very major resistance at 79,000 and breakdowns on Bitcoin, we have to throw... Uh, our, our handkerchief in the freaking pot, okay? We have to say, okay, this is bad. Let's take a step back. That's the simple reality. So there's three major threats on Bitcoin right now. One of them is the DXY, one of them is USDT.D, and one of them is the 5.3 theory, which predicts a $79,000 top on Bitcoin, okay? I think all three of these will fail. I think the bull market will continue, okay? I am macro bullish. I don't think these threats will hold up, but the fact of the matter is, we don't get anywhere by ignoring threats. We have to take them seriously until they're proven to be debunked, okay? So I will be watching these very closely on this YouTube channel. Those are the threats for Bitcoin right now in cryptocurrency. But overall, regardless of those threats, the market looks very good. The macro is very much intact. Short term, we'll probably see a pullback. Uh, you know, we need to see a breakdown for it to be guaranteed, but it looks likely at this point. But the macro is looking very, very good. So guys... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please go ahead and leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Commenting is very important as well. Just chuck an emoji down there. Chuck anything. Say hello. Say thank you. Just one word. It takes 15 seconds of your time. It really helps me out in the algorithm. I put a lot of work into these videos, guys. So just leave a comment if you can. I really appreciate that. I'll also mention a couple of times here before we end the video, uh, the Bitunix and Blowfin exchanges. My personal exchanges that I advertise on this YouTube channel, I've been using Bitunix personally for trading for about a year at this point. Okay, very good exchange. I've had no real problems with it. Uh, never been hacked before, global, non-KYC, 15% trading fee discount with my referral link down below. Blowfin is an alternative option if you do not like Bitunix for whatever reason. You can check those both out. My links are down there below in the description in the pinned comment. And the last thing I will mention here, guys, is the VIP group on Telegram. If you're interested in getting altcoin trading signals, you can get them on VIP. I post them four times a week. They have a 78% win-loss ratio. Exceptionally good. That's four out of every five trades reaching profits. Check it out down below. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you tomorrow.